Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at Revit 2016 and the graphical user interface and how we can change some of it. Uh, this is a slightly different than the uh, screencast video I made earlier on just the general user interface and its layouts. Here I am in Revit 2016. If I go over to the big blue R, which is the application menu, I can click the options button. <clears throat> and here I can control a few things that will affect the display of Revit. For example, if I go over to user interface, I have these configure panel, and in here there are tabs. And if I check any one of these, I see them. If I don't check them, I don't see them. So let's say, for example, I uncheck the systems tabs because I know I'm not going to be using them, and I use the architecture and structure tab. If I do this, oh, and let's just say hypothetically I don't use energy analysis either. I can uncheck those, hit OK, and now if you look at the ribbon, you'll see that that tab, systems, is gone. You'll also see that you've lost a few as well. So if I go back to the options, go back to user interface, and put a check mark back on those systems, and back on energy analysis tools, and hit OK, they'll all come back. Okay. If I go back to the options of the software under user interface, I can switch it from light to dark, and it makes the background where the ribbon tabs are a darker gray instead of a very light gray. <clears throat> uh, you obviously have keyboard shortcuts which don't really affect the customization of the display other than when we look at the commands and you put your mouse over a command, the tooltip pop-ups and tells you what is the name of the command, but it also tells you in parentheses what the keyboard shortcut is. So if you change the keyboard shortcut, then what's in the parentheses will also display that's different. So therefore, the interface appearance will look different. If I go back to options, <clears throat> uh, let's see, we also have the tooltip assistance. We can go from none to minimum to normal to high. And this really is basically just the speed at which that tooltip pop-up displays and the amount of information that is displayed um, quickly or not so quickly. If we set this to none, then we will not get any tooltip pop-up. If we go back and switch this to minimal, then it only pops up one time and only shows you the name of the command and in parentheses uh, the keyboard shortcut and just the, the command description. That's it. <clears throat> if I go to the options and switch this to say normal, it will give you the command. If you leave it alone, it will expand and give you additional data. If I go back to the options one last time and switch this to high, then all that information shows up right away and it's quick. So it's a matter of what you prefer to see and, or not see in regards to the speed and the data that's showing up. <clears throat> Enable recent files page at startup is checked by default, which means that if it is checked, then you see this window called the recent files window here. This will display. Otherwise, if it's unchecked, it will go straight into uh, asking you to open up a particular project or um, uh, you know, specifying something else. And let's see, what else do we have? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Graphics, obviously. If you have a graphics card, it needs to be compliant to run the software. Hardware acceleration is turned on by default. Uh, what else? Effects. Obviously, the background color can get affected. So we can switch this to some other color. Let's say we do this orange color. And if we start a new project, you'll see the background is this orange color. Uh, pretty bold of a color, so let's go ahead and change that back. <clears throat> and I'm leaving it white, and the reason is because last time I worked with it, I had it at gray like this, and sometimes you can't read certain things that pop up and display in this light grayish color. 
even though that's better for your eyes. So I'm going to switch it back to white for now until I figure out a better color that I like. Um, you have obviously the ability to change the colors for what you select, for what uh, is being pre-selected, in other words, what's your mouse over and tabs, and any alert pop-ups that come up. And you can also set up transparency. And the dimension, temporary dimensions that pop up when you're working with objects have a default size, which you can also change and have their background to be transparent or opaque. And uh, in regards to the view cube, you can also display and change how it appears, show it in the active view only or all 3D views, uh, its position, its uh, view cube size, and its opacity. <clears throat> and so these things really kind of affect the way the graphical user interface appears and displays. If you have macros running, you can set up the uh, whether they are enabled or disabled as well. And so out of the box, those are the different things that you can do to change how Revit interface uh, looks without actually getting into custom API programming. And that's it. That's my screencast on customizing the graphical user interface. Thanks for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.